Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So today we're going to be reading from the third book in my series, The Magnificent Makers. Uh, this book is called Riding Sound Waves. And for those of you who guys may, might not be a little, um, sorry, might not be too familiar, my books uh, follow best friends Pablo and Violet as they go on these out of this world science adventures to a magical laboratory called the Maker Maze. And there with a little help from a kooky scientist, Dr. Crisp, they embark on a science adventure. And each science challenge that they embark on has three levels and they have 120 maker minutes to get out of the maze so that they can return for more science fun. And so in this book, they're joined by a third friend, Henry, and here they're going to be learning all about our senses, right? So our sense of smell, sight, hearing, touch, taste. Those are the senses they're going to be learning about in riding sound waves. And something that I also wanted to point out is that after I finish the reading, I'm going to be doing a fun science demonstration where we'll uh, get to see how our ears work and how our ears detect sound by making a model eardrum. And I wanted to point out that in uh, book three, Pablo Henry and Violet also make a model eardrum and instructions on how to make your own at home can be found in the back of the book. So I'm going to show you how to do it today. It's super easy. You probably already have everything you need in your kitchen. But for reference, there are instructions in the back of the Magnificent Makers number three, writing sound waves. Okay. And so without further ado, we'll get into the reading. I do want to take a moment and mention that there is a fourth book in the series that's coming out. Here's The Great Germ Hunt. So this will be out in October, and it's going to be all about our favorite topic, or maybe not so favorite topic, germs, right? Bacteria, viruses. And we're going to meet a new character. You can see here, Aria. And so we'll learn a little bit more about her in book four, The Great Germ Hunt. Okay, so without further ado, we will get into the reading of Magnificent Makers number three, Riding Sound Waves. Ready? Here we go. Roar, growled Violet. She held up her hands in imitating the towering T-Rex standing in the middle of the museum lobby. Henry jumped. Hey, don't do that, he frowned. You scared me. Sorry, I didn't mean to, replied Violet. Yeah, she was just joking around, said Pablo. Okay, but it's loud enough in here, said Henry. The building was huge with high ceilings and tall stone, col stone columns. Laughter and screams echoed from the planetarium on the second floor. Mr. Ng removed a pencil from behind his ear and waved it in the air. Then he pointed to a brightly colored section of the museum with various rooms waiting to be explored. Today in the kid's corner, you're going to learn all about our five senses. Can anyone remind the class what they are? Pablo's and Violet's hands shot into the air. Mr. Ng called on Violet. Hearing, taste, smell, sight, and she forgot the last one. Touch, added Pablo. Great job, said Mr. Ng. Now, who's ready to have some fun? We are, the class cheered and then scattered. Vamos, said Pablo. He ran toward a room with a giant eye painted on the door. Violet and Henry followed. Whoa, said the trio as soon as they entered. The room was white with black lines drawn all over it. Even the floor was covered with lines that swirled and twisted. It looks like the walls are curved, said Pablo, reaching out his hand, but they're not, they're flat. This is so weird. I think my eyes are confused, said Violet with her arms stretched out to her sides. I'm getting dizzy, said Henry as he wobbled around. Me too, said Pablo. The buddies slowly wandered back out into the lobby. Henry covered his ears. Let's find a new room, he said. Look over there. Pablo pointed to a door with a giant nose hanging over it. I hope that thing doesn't have boogers, said Violet, scrunching up her face. Gross, Henry said, pulling on the sleeves of his costume. Better hurry, don't want any snot falling on you, said Pablo. They were greeted with a sweet smell as they entered. Mmm, said Violet, rubbing her belly. It smells like cake, Pablo blurted out. 
He pointed to the middle of the room where a three layered chocolate cake sat on a stand inside a clear glass box. Colorful noses made of icing decorated each layer. There were cards hanging from plastic cords on a bar that surrounded the stand. They're scratch and sniff, Henry said, holding a card in his hand. It says here that each card smells like an ingredient used to make the cake. Violet scratched one and sniffed. Ew, this smells nasty. If the cake tastes like this, then I don't want any. She let the card drop. Henry picked it up. Yuck, he pinched his nose. Smells like vinegar. Pablo examined the next card. Just as he was about to sniff, he noticed a riddle written on the back. Violet, look, Pablo's voice squeaked with excitement. I think it's from Dr. Crisp. Who's Dr. Crisp, asked Henry. Oh, she's just the coolest scientist ever, replied Violet. And she runs the maker maze, Pablo explained. It's this magical maker space. Henry's face lit up. Really? Violet tucked her wild curly hair behind her ears. Yep, and we get there through a portal of purple light but we have to answer this riddle first. She read it aloud. Baking a cake isn't hard to do. You just need a few ingredients and a pan or two. Use your sense of blank to measure just right. Feel the bladder, feel the batter <laughs> using your sense of blank. It might be yummy, but don't eat too much. When it's almost ready, you'll know your sense of blank will tell you so. But when it's actually time, you'll blank the oven bell chime. Hurry, hurry, there's no time to waste. Try the cake using your sense of blank. Violet bit her lip. Well, the last one is obvious, she said, taste and you hear a bell chime, added Pablo. Henry, do you think, Violet began, but Henry wasn't paying attention. He was over by the door looking into the giant nose. Hey, Henry, come back, Pablo called across the room. Don't yell at me, said Henry. His eyebrows squished together. Pablo glanced at Violet. Uh, I was just trying to get your attention, he said. We need to figure this out. Henry fiddled with his costume sleeve and walked back over to the group. You feel by touching, continued Violet. What about the other two, asked Pablo. Henry shrugged. I, I don't like riddles, he said. They're confusing. Violet bit her lip. I think the first one is sight. Sounds right. And you start to smell a cake when it's almost done, added Pablo. Suddenly, everything in the room began to shake. The scratch and sniff cards danced along the bar. What's going on, said Henry. His voice trembled with the rest of the room. Boom, snap, whiz, zap. Are, are you okay, asked Pablo. Henry was crouched on the floor with his hands over his ears. Violet tapped Henry on the shoulder. He looked at Pablo and Violet and slowly lowered his hands. He stood up and crossed his arms. What was that, he asked. It was the portal, it opened, Violet replied. It sounded like the portal exploded, said Henry as he fixed his costume. Pablo and Violet giggled. Then Pablo saw a purple light near the door. This way, he said, rushing out of the room. What happened to everyone, asked Henry. Their classmates were scattered throughout the kids' corner, but they weren't moving. Smiles were stuck on students' faces. Time stops when the portal opens, explained Violet. Look at Deepak. She pointed to one of their classmates. He was frozen in the air. It looked like the spaceship on his sneakers were blasting him into space. Pablo smile, smiled as he tapped Violet on the shoulder. No way, we have to enter through there, asked Violet. She shivered. Not cool, Dr. Crisp. The giant nose hanging over the door was glowing within a ring of purple light. Pablo laughed. Look at your hair. Violet's curls were sticking straight up. She giggled. Your hair's doing it too, Henry. It must be the portal, said Pablo. He patted his head. My hair's too short. I think it will suck us up if we jump high enough, Violet said, biting her lip. Will the portal make that exploding noise again when we go through it, asked Henry nervously. No, replied Violet, 
she thought for a moment, but it will feel like a hug that tingles. Ready? asked Pablo. The trio joined hands and squatted before leaping into the air. Bzzzap! Pablo, Violet, and Henry landed on the floor of the maker maze. They dusted themselves off and stood up. This is even cooler than I imagined, said Henry. Pablo and Violet gave Henry a tour of the main lab. They showed Henry the robots that were unpacking, yeah, unboxing a pack of supplies near the huge microscope. They walked between long tables where colorful liquids bubbled in flasks and strange plants jiggled and danced. What's that? asked Henry, pushing his face against a giant glass jar. Inside, a blue three-winged beetle flew in circles. No idea, replied Pablo, but these are my favorite. He pointed to the floating crystals in the zero gravity chambers. Dr. Crisp, we're here, Violet shouted down a long hallway lined with doors. We go through one of those doors to start the challenge, explained Pablo. Then a voice behind them said, well, hello, makers. The trio turned around. Dr. Chris stood tall with her wild rainbow hair and bright purple pants. The maker manual was tucked under her arm. A name tag was fastened to her white lab coat. Lovely seeing you two, as always, she winked at Pablo and Violet. And nice to meet you, Henry. Cool outfit. You, you know my name, said Henry with a big smile. He stood proudly in his costume. Of course, she replied. Is, is that your special power? Are, are you a superhero? asked Henry. Dr. Crisp laughed. Superhero, no. Super scientist, yes. She put her fists on her hips and puffed out her chest. Henry looked at his feet and tugged on the sleeves of his costume. What else do you know about me? he asked. Dr. Crisp tapped her chin with her fingers. I know the maker maze thought you'd be the perfect person to help Pablo and Violet today. She took the maker manual from under her arm. It snapped open to a page with the day of the week at the top. Below were pictures of Pablo, Violet, and Henry. You see, she pointed with her pencil to the name under each picture. Since we have the book open, Pablo said, let's start the challenge. Yeah, agreed Violet. Dr. Crisp flipped the pages of the glittery golden book to one with a large question mark. She explained the rules to Henry. All you have to do is tell the maker manual what you want to learn about today. The maze will design a challenge with three di different levels. You'll have 120 maker minutes to finish and... Henry, this is important, said Pablo. Henry had wandered toward the robots. We only have 120 maker minutes to get back to the museum before everyone unfreezes. Pablo pointed to the screen above them. It showed the kids' corner where the students were as still as the T-Rex. Henry blushed as he walked back over to the group. Sorry, he said. That's all right, Dr. Chris smiled. Sometimes I get distracted by the cool stuff in the maze too. She tapped the maker manual with her pencil. So makers, what's today's science topic? Pablo and Violet said together, let's learn about our senses. The pages of the maker manual began to turn slowly, but quickly gained speed. Then suddenly they stopped. The page read, level one, mystery maker box. Go to door number one to begin. Dr. Chris closed the maker manual and stuffed it in a backpack lying by her feet. Pablo, Violet, and Henry felt something on their wrists. Our magnificent maker watches, Pablo said. We need them to keep track of maker minutes, Violet explained to Henry. We can only come back if we finish in time. Okay, makers, let's get a move on. Dr. Crisp did three cartwheels and a backflip. She landed in front of door number one. Pablo, Violet, and Henry rushed behind her. As she opened the door, their watches glowed and vibrated. The room was pitch black. All the makers could hear was the sound of one another's breathing. Suddenly, Dr. Crisp's voice boomed over a loudspeaker. Step right up, step right up, makers. Welcome to the first level of your sensory adventure. 
And so if you want to find out what happens to Violet, Pablo, and Henry in the Maker Maze, continue reading The Magnificent Makers number three, Riding Sound Waves. So I hope you guys enjoyed that reading. And now we get to do a really fun science demonstration that again is found in the back of Riding Sound Waves. And it has all of the instructions and all of the materials that you need. So you can just find it there. The series illustrator, Reggie Brown, is a super awesome artist and made great pictures that can really help you put your model eardrum together. But before we make the model eardrum, I want to talk a little bit about what is sound. Sometimes we might think of sound as being something invisible that's just there that our ears pick up, but sound is actually something physical. When I make a noise, like let's say <laughs> clapping my hands, what that does is it says, sends vibrations through the air. And those vibrations start to send our air molecules just crashing into one another, crashing, crashing, crashing. And they pass those vibrations to our eardrum where our eardrum begins to vibrate. And then those signals are sent to our brain and our brain says, Deanne just clapped her hands. Now, you might be wondering, what are air molecules? Well, our air also isn't invisible. It's made up of small little things like ah, the oxygen we breathe in and then the carbon dioxide we breathe out. And it's also filled with a lot of nitrogen. So again, when I clap my hands, I send those oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrogen mo molecules just bouncing all over the place, sending sound waves to my ears that my ears then detect and say, Deanne clapped her hands. So now we are going to make a model eardrum. So when sound comes into our ears, it goes through something called an ear canal and then bounces off of a little structure right here called an eardrum. And that eardrum moves a few little bones in our ears, which then moves some special ear cells. And then those signals are sent to our brain. So we're now going to make a model eardrum to see exactly how that happens. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen briefly so you guys can see me more fully. And to make our model eardrum, we only need a few things. We just need a bowl, some plastic wrap, something to make noise with. I use an old pot and this used to be a wooden spoon, but I've made so much noise with it that I've broken it. And now it's more like a wooden paddle, but it works nonetheless. And then my favorite part, sprinkles. We're going to see these guys fly. Okay. So I'm going to lower my, there we go. We can see that. So now to make the model eardrum, all we're going to do is take a piece of plastic wrap and we're gonna put it over our bowl and we want it to be nice and tight. I would say this is probably the most important step. And you'll see in the book that Pablo and Violet and Henry struggle a little bit here, but you really need to get this nice and tight. So I tend to pull it a couple times to really make sure it's nice and tight. And if you try this and it doesn't work, that's okay. Sometimes we make mistakes even when we're doing science. And the important thing is just to keep trying. So if it's not tight enough the first time you try it, just try again. Okay, so now we have that nice and tight. Now I'm gonna take about, I think this is about a half a teaspoon and I put even less. I probably just put about a quarter of a teaspoon of sprinkles on our model eardrum. Can you guys see that okay? All right, now here comes the fun part. I am going to make a lot of noise with my pot and, and, and paddle. <laughs> so if you're sensitive to sound or maybe if you have headphones on, it's probably going to be a good idea to turn down the volume because it's going to get kind of loud and we don't want to damage those ears. So I'll give you guys a chance to turn down the volume and you don't need to hear to see the sound waves that we're about to make. All right. And without further ado, let's ride some sound waves. One. Two, three. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Wasn't that a lot of fun? You want to do it one more time? Here, I can do it one more time for you guys. Ugh, I can never do this experiment just once. All right, we'll put some more. 
So now watch those sound waves flow through the air and make the eardrum vibrate and the sprinkles jump everywhere in three, two, one. <laughs> And now my desk is a mess, but that's okay. All for the love of science. <laughs> so that is a really simple experiment that you can do at home to see how our eardrum works. Our eardrum literally works the exact same way. When sound comes in, all of those vibrations that the air molecules crashing into each other make vibrate our eardrum and all of those vibration signals go to our brain and tell us that a sound just happened. So it's pretty cool. And you can test and see maybe what is the softest sound that you can make and still make your eardrum vibrate? You can ask, okay, maybe you can use sprinkles or rice or something else and see if they vibrate differently. There are so many options that you can um, use to kind of play around and experiment. And I have an experiment sheet that you can download on my website, theangriffith.com, or you could just make up your own. It's a very simple sheet. There's nothing too fancy to this, but it's always important to record your observations when you're doing a science experiment. So without further ado, I'd love to take any questions if you guys have any for me before we wrap up. Let's see, I'm just going to clean up my sprinkles in the meantime. <laughs> and you can uh, unmute or put them in the chat. Either way is fine with me. That was so much fun seeing them move, Theanne. I really love seeing them jump around. It's oh. a lot of fun. It's very messy, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And someone, that was great. Um, I saw a question. What is the lowest sound wave ever? Did I get that right? Oh. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting question. So I don't know if this is the lowest sound wave ever. So it's not quite answering your question, but I think it's getting at your question, which is like, what is maybe the quietest sound that you could make or hear? So I don't know the exact answer to that, but what I can tell you is a pretty cool fact. So you know how I just said that sound is air molecules bouncing around? Well, guess what? In space, there's not a lot of air. And so it's actually really, really hard to hear things in space because there's not much air molecules to bounce around. And so sound has nothing to vibrate. And so our ears can't pick up any of the sounds. But scientists are working on really fancy machines that are real, you can think of them like really, really, really sensitive ears. So they can pick up some of the lowest sound waves, right? And they're, they're, they're facing outer space and they're trying to pick up space sounds. And they've already got a few, but they need to develop better machines to pick up even more space sounds. But could you imagine if we could maybe like hear an alien trying to talk to us? It's really hard with our own ears, right? Because our own ears near those ear, need those air molecules to bounce around. And we don't have- That would be so space. cool. I know. Wouldn't it be cool? So we need people to grow up and be smart scientists like you guys so we can make these cool new machines. Yeah, totally. Thank you for asking my question. <laughs> no <laughs> problem. My absolute pleasure. Any other questions for Thea? This was so cool. And yes, I love the yes. characters. And we have the books at the library. Um, this was so much fun. Thank you. And if you guys follow me maybe on Facebook or Instagram at Doc Thea Griff, you can stay tuned to future events that I do like these that are be free and open to the public. I just did something, for example, with Sylvan Learning Center um, last week where I did a, another presentation. So um, you guys can stay up to date with more magnificent makers um, by following me on social media. Again, at Doc Thea Griff on pretty much everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so much fun. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> My pleasure. And yeah, thank you for having me. This was really awesome.